Greetings and salutations, prop makers of the world. This week, I'm building, or I'm starting to build, a flamer from the Warhammer 40k universe, a heavy flamer with, from the Stern Guard. But in this exact example, it has some very detailed elements within it. So while I'm not starting the rifle specifically, I'm starting some of the elements, and I thought I'd take you along for the ride. This technique can be used for many different things. Uh, it's not specific for what I'm doing here. The plan I'm going to be putting up on sawwin.ca so you can go grab it whenever you want. Uh, I'm never going to make it a priced item because it's just so simple. But you can use it to make this little guy here. Well, it's not that little. You can see it's got some decent size to it. Um, it's pretty much made completely out of Sculpey, sculpted and built to look like it's actually made out of metal. And this is going to be put onto the side of the rifle when it's, well, not even a rifle, on the side of the flamer when it's all finished. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. Uh, remember to like, share, and subscribe if you like what I'm doing. And if you hate what I'm doing, mash that down vote button like your life depended on it. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video. What I'm going to do, this is the main symbol that goes on the side of the rifle. And what I did is, I'll have this plan available on samhain.ca for free. And you can download whenever you want. This just gives you your, your basis of how we're going to make this thing and how it's going to go together. This is scaled for the size of the rifle that I'm making. And you can make it down or up or whatever, but this is actually a pretty cool looking symbol that I put together. Anyways, you can see down here that I've broke it all up. And while I was off camera, I took packing tape, printed this out, and just covered in packing tape so I have a clear surface to work on. Then what I did, I'm going to move this off to the side. You can see here, I went and for the background, you can see that this is going to be the uh, main basis of it. And what I did is I made a, a circle here that's about maybe just under a quarter of an inch thick. This here is just a strip of Sculpey that I used to go over the top. I'm modifying the, the symbol just slightly for myself because I want to, but I wanted to show you where we are here because everything revolves around getting this part done. So I'm gonna go through and you get to listen to some fine music as I go and I texture this with a magnet. Now this, you can use whatever you want, but I like the way this thing makes it look like dimpled metal. After I'm done, we're gonna go over and I'm gonna discuss a bit more with you. Okay, so now that we've got the background all finished, which is quite the optical illusion, I'm hoping that it stays in. It looks all bumpy, but it's actually all inset. It'll look better once we get it painted. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm hoping that my knife is still here, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently chamfer parts of this edge here. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here for a moment while I go get the rest of the Sculpey ready to start doing the laurels that surround the outside here. Um, and you know, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm trying not to yak for three and a half hours because I want people to actually make it to the end of this video. So I'm going to switch and I'm gonna go grab more Sculpey. I'll be back and we'll go over how we're going to lift the leaves and duplicate them. So now, well, do you see I went and just did a slab of clay, about a little less than a quarter of an inch. Use your own, uh, your own judgment on this one. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the leaves, or the laurel leaves. And we're going to end up having to do two sets of these, but I'm going to show you how to transfer the plan onto this so it works perfectly. And this is why we taped it. Okay, so what you do is, let's have a look here. I think that if I do this clay, I can hit all the way through I. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to go A and just trace it with your pen. We gotta be quick here though, because you don't want this pen to dry. There we go. Okay. 
and we end up actually doing this twice because the second side we just flip over okay so now that the pen's on there you take your sculpey and you push it down onto the paper like so and now when you pull it up i need to get a different pen but hopefully you can see the marks for the actual leaves the next time i'm going to do it i'm going to get a better pen that one dried really quickly and usually it doesn't so that's that's on me so i'm going to go get a better pen but i can cut out one of these to show you what's going to go okay as you can see that's how you go about cutting out the leaves so now what you want to do is you want to go through and you want to make two sets of these two full sets because the first set goes this way and then for the second set we just flip it over like so and you have your be able to make your second laurel set so once I've got all these cut out, I'm going to show you how I go about decorating the leaves before we actually, you know, go through and start attaching them to our finished work that we've we done previously. So I'll be back once I finish cutting off all of these leaves and then we'll continue. Okay, on. so all the leaves are now cut out. When you do it, make sure you separate them into left and right hand sides because you know, you, you need to make sure that when they go up that they go on the right side. So this is obviously how I've got them laid out on the table here is what they are. Now, we're gonna go over the decorating of just a single leaf so you can see how I go about it. Oh, I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna have those all sitting up at angles and bending where they shouldn't be. Okay, so when you go to go texture, I'm not sure, I, I textured it one way in the previous and I'm not sure it's gonna be able to be cut out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do the texturing on this. I'm going to do a hammered metal on the actual leaf like I did with the main part. You've got to be careful here because you don't want to hit too, too, too hard because it'll change the shape of the leaf and we don't want to do that. So you can see how I'm just being gentle about this. There we go. A little bit on the edge. Just clean up that edge ever so slightly and just like that you have a textured leaf hopefully we can get the light on it there we go we have a textured leaf that looks like it's mass produced and not too 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 fancy so i'm going to go through and do the other leaves like this and i'll be back okay so uh what we're going to do now is each of these items as per the picture here you see how we have I. What we wanna do is we wanna start at the back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with I. So you go through, you find the uh, piece that corresponds with I. Now this is the part that is hard because you have to get your, what you can do is you can actually bring your In the center so anyways I will stop here I'm going to do a bit more work on this and then we will be back to do the skull and the sculpting which will be actually be done separately and then stuck on after okay so we are going on to after we got the main uh, plaque done we are moving on to doing the actual skull so this one you want the clay to be about a quarter of an inch thick again and this time I actually have a better pen to trace around this. Make sure I'm in frame. Yes, I am. Trace around this like that. 
you want to keep this somewhat of this detail. Then I'm going to quickly do the nose and then do the eyes. And now, if you know I don't rub my own hand into my pen marks, this is going to work much better than the first time around. Take that, press it down onto your final, hook it up, and see, ta-da! That was how it was supposed to work last time, you know, if I had a better means of transfer. So, so now once you've got the skull here, what you want to do is you want to push in the edges. So you end up, instead of having it flat or negative camber or whatever, you want to push in all of these edges to give the whole skull a bit more of a rounded appearance. Now, with the leftovers that we had from the previous cut, what we're going to do is we're going to roll that into a, a, a worm. But this best, that's the best thing I can call it. And then what we're going to do is you want to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to make it a bit thicker. So I'm just going to re-roll that, get a bit more thickness to it. Now, what you want to do is you want to roll it down, come up and around, and clip it. So it sits like this. Now, the top side, blend that in immediately, like so. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to quickly build out certain parts of this skull to make it look good. So we're just going to take a little piece of triangle here, and it's going to become the bridge of the nose, like so. And once again, blend that in. This one blends down and into the skull. And what you want to end up with is a bit of a peak in the middle for the nasal bridge. Now, you grab your tools and uh, you, uh, let's grab this tool. Now, what you want to do is with the nose, you want to start down here, get this all blended in before I go further, but we'll do the eyes actually. You use just uh, something to push down and you feed all of the bottom. Now, at the bottom here, what you want to do is you want to push towards the bottom. And what happens is that the material you're displacing ends up going down and makes the eye socket that much deeper. This is actually not the exact tool that I want to use, but it will work for now. Oh, there it is. That's the one I wanted. This has just got a little bit more of a rounded bottom on it. So once again, same thing on the other side, just push down. And what we're doing is we're just opening up that eye socket or punching down that eye socket. We'll do the same thing here. And there we go. Now, uh, it looks like we've got a bit of a deviation and just push that around. Now, on the nose, you start low. You make two imprints with the bottom, and then you push up and you push up. There we go. Use the sharp end of the tool to make the actual top of the, the nose, of the top of the nose, the top of the nostril. Okay, and once you're there, your skull is pretty quickly getting formed. I like to take just a little bit more, probably about hmm, that much. Take a piece of clay, put it on the top here. I'm not sure I'm gonna have to cut it out after my daughters decide to go from playing to arguing. Anyway, so now what you can do is you can use, and now that's gone missing as well. Oh, no, it's right there. What I can, what you can do now is you're pretty much done this skull. It really sculpts quickly, which is nice. And then what I do is the same thing that I did before, doing a bit of uh, texturing. Over the eyelid, over, over the eye sockets, you can do it as well. Just be gentle. You don't want to beat it up because you're going to distort all of what you've done. And you don't want to do that as much. You just want to add some character and some texture to your finished project here. There we go. We're going to do that. There we are. All hammered and done. So now we're going to quickly just hit the teeth just a tiny bit. You don't want to go too much here because you'll weaken the teeth and they'll fall out. Well, strangely, yeah, that works. And then I just use the edge here to round the teeth off. Look at that, it's already wanting to fall off. Well, that's okay because strangely enough, this skull is not where it's going to, this skull is going to not see the light of day. Actually, I might save this one. This one turned out pretty good. Now what you can do is you can take a pointy stick and you can just go into the eye sockets, add some texture, and just go by eye now. You can see what looks good, what doesn't look good, and 
see what you want to do and have some fun. It's This is not an exacting art. This is just enjoy what you're doing and go by eye. If at the end it looks good, then fantastic. So that is the skull that goes in the center. Now we're going to do through the magic of... Oh, well, look at this. I'm going to spoil the fun here. So this here is the final one that I did last night. And now, same with the outside that you saw before, which, oh, I need to remember, I added a few little extra elements that I had not initially attended on. Up here, I put some rivets around the edge because I like the way it looked. Same with down here. And you can see that it lines up pretty good. And then once the skull is finished, the T goes there. You can see the T down here. I'm not sure about this. It appears on the actual model. The background circle doesn't. But the reason I did it like this is I need to have a strong base for it all to bind to. If not, I'm literally uh, fighting into nothing. So right there is the logo sculpted and baked and done. So once I'm done, I'm going to glue this onto here. And uh, then the I can do painting here with a bit more ease without this being in the way and fighting it on me. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to base coat this. I haven't decided if I'm going to base coat it in silver yet or if I'm going to base coat it in black. But regardless of which way I go, you'll see on the back and then we'll talk about how I'm going to go about finishing this because I want it to be gold. Anyways, catch you in a bit. And welcome back. So I had to leave this the other night because I ended up using a glaze that took forever to dry. So first of all, I'm doing this a little bit different than I normally do because I want to kind of speed up the process. So you're not watching me paint for three and a half hours. So initially what I did is I base coat this whole thing with a black mix with silver. I wanted a, a steel type color on the base. And then what I did is on this side, I took gold and I've been dry brushing multiple layers. So I'm just going to go over one of those very quickly. Actually, no, I didn't dry brush this. My mistake, I used a sponge and I was gonna go over that because it really is a great and easy technique to get, if you don't have access to say an airbrush or you don't want to like me right now, mech around with getting your airbrush out. I'm gonna spin this this way so you can see it nice and clearly. Get uh, some paint onto your sponge and you'll be doing multiple coats here and then you just tap it on and don't be too hard on the amount of paint you put on with each pass. And that's part of the reason why I did this as well, because this does take multiple passes to make right. Um, up here, I just did a gold again and I put in silver, I just colored the rivet silver because I liked the way it looked. And after this, I'm going to do a little bit more gold and this is going to be finished. You'll see the finished result at the beginning of the video. You don't need to watch me spend 15 minutes uh, on, you know, doing gold after gold after gold. Anyways, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, remember to like, share, hate it, love it, all that stuff. Uh, and I look forward to the next one. Anyways, have a good one, prop makers. Mm -hmm.